Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel from PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to work on broadcast graphics. So if you're working on creating the motion graphics for a TV show or an online web series, this tutorial will cover some of the basics of how you can go about creating these graphics and some of the ideas that go in behind this. Now we will be creating a quick uh, bumper and along with a up next screen. And I kept this up next screen kind of generic so you can use this for whatever. If it just needs to be like a lower third or just some sort of title card that has a little bit of information, you'll be able to do that with this template. However, if you're not looking to recreate the wheel, there's a ton of broadcast graphics here on rocketstock.com that will you know, completely brand your TV show or your online web series, and you'll have everything you need inside these packs. There are several of them here on rocketstock.com. But in the meantime, here we are back in After Effects, and let's go ahead and create a new composition. And I'm gonna call this one tutorial. And I'm using 1920 by 1080, 23.976 frames per second. And I'm gonna click OK. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it in my image of New York here. And what I suggest doing is kind of have a reference image to what the overall mood of the show is supposed to look like. So you're not just not like creating graphics on a black screen. You can kind of get an idea of how things can kind of blend together. And plus, I think in my opinion, it makes it a lot easier to kind of be creative. But anyway, let's go ahead and start creating some shape layers and creating this brand. So I'm working with the premium beat brand and we're gonna go ahead and grab say like the rectangle tool and we're just gonna draw out a nice rectangle like this. And I wanna change the fill color to our primary color of our logo, which is a bit yellow gold and we'll click okay. And let's grab the rectangle tool again and let's draw out kind of like a border, kind of like this and let that be right above our main uh, background here. And this will be kind of like a bordered image. And of course, change this color to white or whatever color that you want. Maybe like a secondary color of your logo or something. And we'll come in here and try to put this right on top of our uh, background there. There you go. So now we'll have like a general background down here. Let's go ahead and just put something at the top so the top of our screen isn't just empty. We'll grab like another sort of rectangle like this. And now we have all of our backgrounds in here. So let's go ahead and rename these. And we'll call this one top layer. We'll call this uh, border here, call it border layer. And we'll call this one our bottom layer. And what we're going to want to do is kind of lower the opacity on all these. So let's go ahead and grab all of our layers here, except for our background. Set T on keyboard for opacity. And let's set this down to like, say, 67% or something like that. And this will allow us to see right through the background. And we're not going to be covering up any sort of video footage that we'll put underneath our uh, graphics here. So we'll come here, grab the text title tool, and we'll start putting in some text. And I'm going to use the font uh, Beatbaz Nuu, which I hope I said that correct, if I can type it in there. We'll type in the word next. Now, typically, you might want to write up next, but I'm more of a less is more sort of guy. So I like to see the word next. And plus, our bumper is going to say up next anyway. I truly believe when creating 2D graphics, that typography is a huge part of the overall design. So you want to be very mindful of what uh, typefaces and fonts that you use. Um, you know, I'm usually typically go with two typefaces. Good. In this case, I'll use Beatbaz, and, and the other font I'll be using is Gotham. So come here. We have like this big word that stands out called next, and obviously we know what uh, we're looking at here. And what I suggest doing, go ahead and set the uh, paragraph alignment to align right, just so if you need to change this a little bit later, it'll automatically be in its spot. And that's always another thing to be thinking about is the paragraph alignment. So you can quickly change things out later without having to reposition anything. And trust me, that can be an absolute pain. So go ahead and keep that in mind. So this is, I like where this is at. So let's go ahead and type out some more text here. And maybe we can type out maybe 7 p.m. So this is the time this uh, you know show that will air. And let's go ahead and change the uh, typeface here to Gotham. And maybe we'll use something like... Uh, a book font here and we can come here and lower this and maybe we can make it all caps by clicking the TT button here or all caps and make it a bit smaller and you know that should be a bit interesting and you'll put that right there and of course let's go ahead and just duplicate this layer bring it underneath and let's go ahead and retitle this to maybe like after effects tutorials and then maybe we can make this uh, you know text bold or something so it can stand out because this is technically the important information here because this is what the show is. And what I was saying about before the uh, text alignment is that we want to make sure this is now set to the left alignment. 
And we can go ahead and select all these layers, go to the left alignment here underneath the paragraph tab, and let's go to the align tab. If you don't see the align tab, go up to window align, and we can set this to the left horizontal alignment here, and those are perfectly matched up like that. So my point is doing this is that if we if we want to change this, you know, word text to something, we can be like, hey, obviously that will be in the same spot like that. So it's an easy fix. And then if we want to change this text later, which we will definitely be changing this text later, it will automatically be in its exact spot. So we don't have to reposition anything. So something to keep in mind. And of course, for some optional text here at the top, we can come out here and maybe type the name of the show. And now I probably wouldn't put any text up here if I was doing it for a, you know, a real show. But um, maybe we can come here and change this to black. And it's just optional. You know, no big deal here. So I also suggest adding as much branding into your graphics as possible. So what I suggest doing, bring in like the logo of the show or something. In this case, I have the premium beat logo and you know, I'm going to go ahead and set this to a white background. I already added the uh, generate fill effect and set it to white. So you go to effect generate fill. And then what I'm going to do is go to the ellipse tool here. You know, make sure nothing is selected and hold down shift on my keyboard to draw out a uh, perfect circle like this. Set the fill to black and we'll put this underneath our logo here. And we go to the align tab and center this up so it's directly in the middle. And now we have our logo on a circle background. Of course, this is my personal design taste. There's nothing, you know, there's no set rules to what you can do. But we'll go back to our tutorial here. Go to our project and bring in our logo comp. And come here and scale this down. And we can be able to, like, put this in the corner here. So now just a little bit more extra detail into these graphics. And you're getting the branding in front of your audience. Not overwhelming. This is kind of subtle. And I think it works just well. And then let's go to the pen tool here at the top and let's create a divider right here. So come here, click a point and click another point down here by holding down shift. And we have a straight line like this. However, we need to come here and click on the word fill, turn that off and click on the word stroke at the top. And we'll set this to a solid color. And I'm going to use uh, three pixels and we'll come here. And now we have this divider here and you know, it's pretty interesting. And we can rename it to divider. So now we got to do a little bit of animation and since there is no animation when the screen is up, what I suggest doing, add a little bit of animation to the focus area. So if we have some movement down here. We know that the audience will look at it and hopefully we'll read this information down here. So I want to add just a little bit of movement down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw out like a rectangle here on the side and a thin rectangle, maybe like that. Turn off the stroke and we'll turn on the fill here at the top. And we'll set it to white. And we'll come here, set the opacity down to like 30% or something. And that will kind of blend in there. And of course, we want to zoom in here and kind of make sure we match this up to the best of our ability. Kind of like that. And that should be okay. Perfect. And we'll call this one, you know, rectangles or something. And we go into the shape layer here. Go into the contents. Go to add. And we'll add a repeater. And let's go ahead and open this up. Let's increase the number of copies like you know i mean like crazy here so like maybe we'll do like 40 or so and then what we need to do is come here to the offset a little bit maybe set this to like negative 35 maybe increase the number of copies by just a little bit more and we'll add a keyframe for offset go to the end of our animation which we'll say maybe like 10 seconds or something and we'll go ahead and animate the offset to come towards the right side so now we said it's like negative 14 from negative 35 you'll see that this will animate just like this and that's pretty interesting. Maybe, you know, if we want a little bit slower, maybe we can do like negative 20. So it won't be as fast. And now this will kind of draw just a little bit of attention to your viewers. And then we go ahead and close this up. And we'll just put this right above our top layer right here. So that'll kind of blend in a little bit nicely. And then, of course, if you need to lower the opacity, just go ahead and lower that down to maybe 15% or something like that. Just so it's nice and subtle, uh, but not overwhelming, of course. So now let's talk about animating each of these on. So the first thing that needs to come on are the backgrounds here. So let's go to maybe like the top layer, hit P on your keyboard for position, add a keyframe for position, bring that keyframe forward by like a second, and we'll have this animate up just like this. And now we just have like this animation. And of course, we'll go ahead and select both these keyframes, hit F9 on our keyboard to make it easy ease keyframes. And we'll go to our bottom layers here. And we'll go to the beginning, hit P on the keyboard for position, add a keyframe, move that forward in time. And we'll just have this come down from the bottom like this. And we'll just match that up as best as we can. And we'll make both of these keyframes easy, easy keyframes. And then grab the border layer, hit P on your keyboard for position, bring that forward in time by a second. And then we'll have this come on from the left here. 
and animate off like that and make these easy ease keyframes as well. So now all the background layers are coming on and then we just got to work on the rectangles here. So we can do you know basically the same thing. So we'll just copy the keyframes from the bottom layer and we'll go ahead and paste this to our rectangle layer as well. So that will kind of come on at the same time, kind of like in the same group. And that's interesting. So now we just have our actual text elements and logo element here to animate on. So, you know, what I like doing is kind of keep the animation consistent. So if we're doing position animation, let's go ahead and do position animation for the text as well. So we'll grab the word next and we'll say once this pops up like right here, we'll hit P on the keyboard and we'll want this to come on, start coming on right now. So bring this keyframe forward by a second or so and we'll offset it off screen like this. And now we got this looking pretty good. And then we'll go to like our divider here and we'll go into add and we'll add a trim paths effect. Open this up. We'll set the start to 50% and the end to 50%. So now we don't see anything there and we'll go ahead and add a keyframe for start and end. Go by like forward by like second here and set this to 100% and set the end to 100%. Uh, sorry, set the end to 0%. So now if I zoom in here real fast, you'll see that the end, you'll see that the divider kind of grows in from the center like that. And that's pretty interesting. Make all these keyframes easy, easy keyframes as well. And now the divider's in there. And then let's go ahead and work on the logo here. And we'll just do a scale keyframe because I think that, you know, for a circle, I think circles should always scale in for some reason. That's just my style. We'll add a keyframe for scale, uh, bring that keyframe forward in time and set the scale down to 0% and make these easy ease keyframes as well. Forgot about the premium beat text here at the top. You know, maybe we can just have that come on there somewhere. So just do the position keyframe as well. And we'll just have it animate on from this side. And we'll offset that in time and make them easy ease keyframes. So now let's do a little bit of custom text animation in here. So we want this to come on right when the divider pops up. So right here, go ahead and grab both these text layers and hit P on our keyboard for position. Add a keyframe for both of those move them forward in time. And what we're going to do is basically swap positions here. So we'll go ahead and bring the after effects text up right where 7 PM is at, and then bring the 7 PM text down to where after effects used to be. And then we're going to go ahead and pre-compose each of these layers. So grab the after effects text, go ahead and copy that and call it maybe like a uh, show placeholder text and click. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing for the 7 p.m. text. And in, sorry, you go up to layer pre-compose and we'll call this one time placeholder text. And OK is all good. And now what we can do is grab the rectangle tool. We'll grab the show placeholder text and just draw out a rectangle right above After Effects tutorials just like that and set it to subtract. And go ahead and copy the mask, paste it on top of the time placeholder hit M on your keyboard and set this to add. So now if we scrub through here, you'll see that the text will kind of come in just like that from the side. And I think that's really good. And let's go ahead and go into like the show placeholder text here, hit U on your keyboard. So let's say we want this to be up here for two seconds. So let's go to like five seconds here and let's add another keyframe for position and go forward in time by like 12 frames or so. And then we'll just have this animate downward. And then we'll come over here, make sure the layer selected, go up to edit split layer, right at that last keyframe. And then we'll just delete this layer, duplicate this layer by going up to edit, duplicate, hit U on a keyboard to bring up the keyframes. And we'll just offset this to like right here. And maybe we'll just like fix up the keyframes real fast here. So now our new you know, piece of text will animate in and we can come here and rename this to, you know, filmmaking tutorials or for, or whatever our next uh, uh, show will be. And now if we go back to our main comp over here, we'll see that the After Effects text gets pushed down and the new text comes in from the top. And what we need to do to get rid of this new text, because we want to hide that as well, grab the rectangle tool and we'll just draw out like another, you know, thin mask, kind of like this to cover up the text and set this to subtract. And then of course you can repeat this for however long you want it to be. And then we need to go into the time placeholder and we need to do the same exact thing. So this comes up and we'll have it up for, to five seconds, add a keyframe there, go to like 512 ish, and we'll bring it up even more. And we'll split the layer, delete it, duplicate this layer, you know, and then we'll offset it in time and we'll match up the keyframes. 
and we'll come here and set this to 8 p.m. So now we go back to our tutorial. So we got 7 p.m. and then it goes right to 8 p.m. So now that we have this nice, you know, up next screen, let's go ahead and create a quick bumper to play at the beginning of this. So let's come here, select everything except for maybe the image, and we'll go ahead and pre-compose everything, go up to layer, pre-compose, and we can call it maybe up next screen. Click OK. And we'll go ahead and offset this by maybe two seconds or so. So now we have nothing again. Let's go ahead and grab the ellipse tool. And we'll come here, just draw out like a perfect, you know, circle with a shape layer like this. Go ahead and center that up. So we'll come here and maybe change the fill to our, you know, logo color and turn on the stroke here. And, you know, we'll go ahead and increase the pixel width here to like, you know, 50 or so. And we can come here and just make this a little bit bigger. All right, looking good. And then we can type out our text, which will be, you know, up next. And we'll go ahead and center align that, make that bigger. All right, and we'll use Beat Bass New Ooh. And we'll set this color to white. And make sure to align this in the center of our comp. And we'll go ahead and just continue to make this a little bit bigger. You know, extend the line height here. So let's go ahead and select both these layers, pre-compose it, and we'll call it a bumper. And click OK. And then we'll go to the beginning here. And hit S on keyboard for scale. Add a keyframe for scale. Bring this keyframe forward by almost a second. Set the scale down to 0%. And now we have this. And we'll go to like two seconds here. Add a keyframe for scale. Go forward to, I don't know, like almost three seconds. And set the scale down to 0%. And go back to this keyframe right here, the middle one. And we'll scale this up just by a little bit. So it's coming at us. So there's a little bit, just a little bit of animation. And that's looking pretty good. And let's go ahead and select all these keyframes. Hit F9 on your keyboard to make it easy, ease keyframes. And now we'll have this entire animation and it'll kind of all flow together. And of course, make sure to turn on motion blur for all your layers. Turn it on at the top. Go back into the up next screen and turn on motion blur for everything. And then go into the actual placeholders again and make sure to turn on motion blur for those as well. And as we scrub through here, the one thing I want to keep in mind is the consistency of our graphics. And the one thing that is not consistent is that these background, uh, you know, shape layers are transparent while our up next layer is not transparent. So let's go back into the bumper here, go to the shape layer, hit T on your keyboard and set the opacity down to 67%. And if we go back to our main comp, we'll have all these, uh, you know, consistencies within our graphics and you know I think that's very important and if you were following along with this tutorial you should have gotten something very similar to this so I hope you guys enjoyed this video for more tutorials please be sure to check out our blog at premiumbeat.com and if you're in the need for royalty free music we have a huge library full of great music for your projects and once again thank you for watching this video and this has been Joshua Noel from premiumbeat.com